Jack, is that you? Coming in on your left, he heard Sefi call over sub-vocal comms, about five minutes later, as another patrol of destroyer cultists found out why trying to bum-rush a human was a terrible idea. They were getting much more fierce and fanatic in their attempts to kill him, so Jack assumed he was getting close to somewhere interesting. Overcharge, Jack called out, obliterating both the cover and the last remaining cultists that were hiding behind it, before he spotted a purple hand that shot out of one of the passages on his left. There you, Sefi? Jack called out, and immediately the scritter relaxed and walked out, with Nika following a few moments later. I guess this means the others aren't with you, Nika asked, as Jack shook his head, realising that Alora, Chio and Dante hadn't met up with Nika and Sefi either. They'll be fine, Sefi tried to reassure them both, as Jack came closer to their light and saw Jack's injuries. What the hell happened to you? And where did you get the cool shades? Got jumped by two batshit crazy drow that weren't like the other bastards shooting at us. I assume that means they were probably in charge? Probably, Nika confirmed. Drow nobles tend to stand out for the pack, and they're in charge by default. Makes sense. They gave the same vibe as Isadora, Jack reasoned. I take it you had your own share of trouble? Yup, Nika grinned. Comlinks record everything, so we'll show each other when we get back. Guys, listen, Sefi interrupted, and both Jack and Nika instantly fell silent. The sounds and echoes of fighting had died down heavily, and there was mostly an uneasy silence, with the exception of the occasional unknown bang in the distance. Drow probably lost this one. They probably didn't think they needed to descend into the gloom pass either, Nika whispered. Question is, how much of the cult is still around? At least two commanders are confirmed to be out of action, Sefi reasoned, but that's not what I was talking about. Do you hear the hum? Both Nika and Jack strained their ears, and sure enough, just faintly they could hear it. It almost sounded like... Electronics, Jack concluded. Like a server room or something. We're close, Nika nodded, testing a spin of her gatling laser. You ready? My plasma rifle got knocked hard fighting the drow, Jack noted. But I'm more in my element with my axe and dominator anyway. At least I didn't drop it this time. What about the others, if there's no sounds of fighting? They know how to handle themselves. They're probably sticking around trying to get to us. Chio should have a relative beat on our auras, so they'll catch up when they can, Sefi pointed out. But do we want to push on without them? Jack whispered back. Nika seemed to ponder that for a moment before nodding. This is still time sensitive, and we don't want to give the cult the opportunity to regroup. It's not ideal, but we've got to push on while we have the advantage. Jack nodded, doing his best to trust his friend's judgement. He didn't like the idea of going in with a split party, but they had made it this far. He stayed in front, ready for a fight. His new shades had proven better than a simple fashion accessory, giving him a type of dark vision that outlined the dimensions of the dark caverns and tunnels in a faint purple, and highlighted any would-be ambusher that had tried to take him out, and Jack used these to great effect as he cleared a path. Though the resistance they faced as they followed the source of the humming was token. On the walls of the caverns and tunnels, there were many red lights that gave an eerie glow to their surroundings, which built up the closer they got. Encountering no more resistance over the next few minutes, the three friends stopped in what had to be the penultimate room. Though it wasn't the clearest to Nika or even Sefi in the low red light, Jack could more easily spot the many grooves in the pristine stone floor, forming many complex glyphs and wars that almost encompassed the entirety of the room, with several blank spots dotted amidst the mosaic. At the far end of the chamber lay a raised platform with a lectern, overlooking an altar, and from behind, the group could see a much brighter red glow coming from an exit at the other end of the room. Magic sigils are never a good thing, especially something of this size, Nika growled over sub comms. Plus, no resistance. Feels like a trap. We can probably go around the edge, Jack reasoned. There's something like a thin path all the way around the perimeter we can sneak around. If there's anyone still in the next room, they know we're coming. But if we stay quiet, we might still have the element of surprise. Jack, Sefi replied, like she had just realised something. That spot you pointed out where you said you woke up? I put a virtual marker there and it's directly above us. This could be a ritual room? Nika questioned. Not that we'd be able to tell. Definitely Chio's field of expertise. We could always come back, Jack pointed out. But if not, can we at least get a good look at it with a camera? I'll take the rear and pick up as much of it as I can, Sefi promised. Alright, Jack nodded as he took point. 
Let's go. And hope the others catch up soon. They moved in complete silence as they slowly and methodically moved around the room, not even talking over subvocal comms, keeping their senses wide alert for any dangers. But none came. As they edged ever closer, the electric hum began to drown out everything else, and Jack was hyper-focused as he finally got to the stairs leading up to the ominous next room, quickly looking at the simple stone lectern and not spotting any obvious notes or papers. Ready? Jack asked the two girls, and both nodded confidently. All right. Three, two, one, go. The chamber they entered was large and lavishly furnished, which struck Jack at first glance as looking like an extensive library, with many corridors of shelves containing dusty tomes and unusual looking objects. Quickly taking full cover and assessing the situation, all three noticed the thick, ugly metal cables snaking along the ground that were the primary source of the red glow, which got much brighter further up ahead in what looked to Jack like the centre of the room, judging by what he could see of the ceiling. Close quarters. Be careful, and keep something close range handy, Nika warned over subvocal comms. Get behind me if it gets really bad, Jack added. Yeah, I think we should stick together, Sefi agreed. If we split, we could get picked off. All right, Jack confirmed. Stay frosty. Neither Nika nor Sefi knew what Jack meant by that expression, but they kept it to themselves as they pushed forward, down the long row of bookshelves, checking behind them and through the shelf spaces for any hostiles, but there were none that they could see, and in a way that made things feel worse. Jack stopped suddenly, and silently pointed ahead as they turned a corner. The central part of the room looked like a hacker's paradise, a veritable battle station of crisscrossing wires, numerous monitors displaying anything from streams of data to various news reports and wicked-looking devices connected to the side. Jack quickly noted one, then included a seat with restraints. Yet there was no missing the sole figure standing with their back to them, watching the various video feeds. Hooded in a black robe and carrying a black staff, they paid no attention as the three friends got closer, guns drawn and ready to engage. Welcome, outsider, the figure spoke. It was feminine, quiet and assured with an air of confidence. The three tensed up and prepared to open fire, though something about the voice seemed almost familiar to Jack. Turn around and drop the staff, he ordered, trying to keep his voice steady and level. The figure raised their arms high in surrender and slowly turned on the spot, completely relaxed and taking their time. They did not drop their staff, however. Drop the staff, Jack ordered again, as Nika took an involuntary gasp on seeing the exposed red skin on the figure's hands. Devil's daughter, Sefi whispered. Has to be. The figure still refused to comply with his demand, though made no hostile moves. Slowly and carefully with her offhand, she delicately pinched the fabric of her hood, slowly drawing it back and letting go, just enough for the hood to fall back. Jack almost opened fire right away. It took all of his willpower and discipline not to. He knew there was no way this wouldn't end in a fight, but he needed answers. But still, the familiar face filled him with hate. Though her scars and bodily mutilation had been replaced by evil, wicked-looking cybernetics, there was no mistaking the Stygian woman who had been tormenting him in his dreams. Welcome back, the woman smiled, still keeping both her arms in the air. The Destroyer never lies. We knew you would return here, Outsider. Your destiny demands it. Then you know why we're here, Jack snarled. I want answers. The woman just cackled in answer. You will answer his questions, Nika ordered, as she spun up her gatling laser. The one who hates. The woman grinned a dark smile, refusing to elaborate. Who the hell's that? Jack asked. The hacker controlling Tobaku? Are they controlling you too? The woman kept her smile as she seemed to be examining Jack from head to toe, sizing him. Yeah. Yes, 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 she whispered to herself. His prophecy is coming true. Hey, crazy bitch, answers, now, Sefi interrupted. The woman's smile faded somewhat, as her eyes lazily looked to a newcomer. The end has come, 
a voice whispered from the side, as a hooded figure slid out from behind a bookcase to their right. Wearing a mask of simple white pottery, with the symbol of the burning skull, twin sawtooth blades reflecting the crimson glow. Shit, Nika growled. Those knives. It's the skin saw slasher. Has to be. The Avatar has arrived. Another, different voice whispered from the other side, as another road figure stepped out, with the same blades and mask as the first. There were two skin saw slashes? Sefi tensely questioned, as both guards moved closer to Jack and covered the flanks. No, Jack replied in a grave tone, as more figures emerged, all with the same robes, masks and blades. Such strength and power. A true force of destruction. Another of the slashes added. A perfect vessel of entropy. A deep growl resonated from the small gathering. The time of the destroyer begins. Another whispered from behind them, as the woman simply looked at them. When I give the signal, run back the way we came. We can bottle back them in the corridor, Jack muttered, just enough for their sub-vocal comms to pick it up. Both Sefi and Nico quickly acknowledging. The one who hates desires your death, outsider, the woman purred. But I answer to the destroyer, and I will answer to his champion. Jack, Nico, and Sefi stepped back in shock as the skin saw slashers took to their knees and bowed to Jack. Your arrival has been long foretold, the woman raised her voice to address the group. One worthy enough to be the first hero of the Destroyer. You arrived in our midst, delivered to us by the Destroyer. The one who hates wants you dead? Accept the Destroyer's power and wipe them out first. The electronics behind the woman flashed a darker shade of red in response, but only Jack spotted out of the corner of his eye. One of the slashes twitched slightly. Get ready to move, Jack whispered to the other two. You will be the first and you will be the last, the woman yelled, licking her lips. The harbinger of the apocalypse. Our time has. Suddenly, right in front of them, the air shimmered as a circle of hellfire burned into the ground. The slashes reacted in a mixture of confusion, anger and joy, thinking this to be a sign of the destroyer. But not the woman in front of them. She sneered at the interruption as four forms appeared as the smoke cleared. Chio, Dante, and what could only be a transformed Laura were clearly ready for a fight, but Jack's focus was entirely on the other Stygian woman in front of him. The real Devil's Daughter wasted no time, and struck out at the imposter with a magical ray of Hellfire, who cast a shield to block it. Then, all hell broke loose. Consciousness override complete! Assuming manual avatar control! The slashers all screeched in unison as they jerked upright and rushed forward. Secondary threats detected! Tertiary system compromised! Come on then! Nika yelled in a challenge as the slashers rushed forward with blades out, charging directly towards Jack and Devil's Daughter. Devil's Daughter wordlessly blinked forwards to engage who Jack now assumed was the Prophet, the two women slinging magic at one another as their fight took them further away from the others. Dante barked furiously as the group felt the air around them turn static, noticing that their movements quickened as they immediately opened fire into the slashes while moving back, trying to keep their distance from the close range weapons. Get behind me, Jack called to the others, as the slashes easily shook off shots that would have easily killed anyone else, dashing into melee range. I just... His shield burst out as he used it to batter the slashes back, desperately getting whatever shots off he could, before yelping in pain as he received a brutal cut from the Sawblade's sword of one of the slashers, who had dodged his counterattack and lunged past his defence. Fall back! Nikki yelled to the others, as a blast of her shotgun finally took one down, before she quickly allowed Chio to lean on her, as the Alithi desperately tried to keep the bulk away from them with her abilities, but she was quickly faltering. Alora yelled out a word of power, as she quickly lashed out with a lance of holy power, splitting from the group, as she charged forward and skewered one of the slashers with a spear of light. You will never kill anyone again, she yelled with righteous fury, as she flew back to avoid a nasty slash from a taller slasher that nicked her ankle. Get away from them, Jack yelled in panic, as he took some nasty cuts to the back, as he turned to batter a duo of slashers that were rushing at Nika, Sefi and Chio, 
as they move back to the corridor's shelves to avoid getting swarmed. Catching one with his now drawn axe, easily forcing the unforgiving blade through the flimsy block and burying it deep into the slasher's shoulder, leaving their arm uselessly hanging at their side. The slasher didn't even flinch. The counterattack from the slasher's other sawtooth sword scraped Jack's shield as he quickly brought it round to try and defend himself, moving in an arc to further block any further attackers on his flanks. Jack knew he couldn't keep playing defensive for much longer. It was too slow. He gave a quick glance to Elora, who was busy tearing through slashes and knew she had the right idea. And that was the problem in his mind, wasn't it? He didn't trust the others to be able to hold their own without him. Nika, can you guys manage without me? Jack called back, as he tried to finish off the slasher he crippled. We've got this, Jack, Nika called out, as she expertly extended her bow staff, fending off three of the slashes at once, at the opening to the corridor, as Chia was able to take a breather and lash up with her power. Yeah, go crazy! Sefi yelled out from somewhere. Help Alora and Dante! Creature analysis complete! Outsider status confirmed! The slasher growled as Dante dashed forward to evade the attack, yipping in pain as the tip of a blade caught their flank, before a jolt of electricity jumped along the blade and stunned the slasher in return, who fell to the ground with a thud before stirring once again. Dante did not hesitate, clamping his powerful jaws around the exposed throat of the slasher, quickly ripping it out before looking around. Dante's family were really nice, even the grumpy blue one. They gave Dante his name and gave him food, drink, a den, and lots of fuss. They did good things and stopped bad people that wanted to hurt them. That was why the Shining Lady sent him to help them. He loved his new family and would do anything to keep them safe from the bad people. He saw Mistress Alora back in her strange new form, fighting bad people, and more were coming to try and hurt her. Dante barred loudly as he channeled his divine magic, blasting the bad people with chain lightning that fought through a bunch of them, but not killing any. How? They were badly hurt though, and he could see Master Jack running right at them. Dante knew Master Jack had this, so quickly went to look for the others. He was a good boy. Sefi was at a disadvantage. She knew how to strike from the shadows with her knives, but against people who knew how to do that themselves, she wasn't going to risk it. Especially with these numbers. What to do? Oh! Don't die, you two! I'm going high! Sefi grinned, as Nico flicked out her bow staff and covered the entrance, while Chio assisted her range, igniting her side blade for quick use. Sefi quickly used her wings to help propel her up the bookcase, until she was able to squat precariously on the top. Taking aim with her pulse rifle, she tried to see what damage she could do. Seeing the bright bolt of blue, Sefi knew Dante was holding up alright. Alora was still tearing through slashes as best she could, who were trying their best to coordinate their efforts into bringing the Eladri down. Sefi could see that Alora had taken several hits, but didn't seem to show any pain as she continued to strike out as Jack made his way to her. Still, might as well thin the numbers, Sefi grinned to herself as she took aim at an exposed slasher, and took its head off completely. Huh? How are they still moving? They continued moving carefully forward despite lacking sight, and it was only when Sefi put another burst into their legs that they stopped being an immediate threat. She looked up further ahead, and saw the Devil's Daughter was still engaged in a battle with the Prophet, with a few dead slashers nearby. She spotted a live one sneaking about to try and get the drop on Devil's Daughter, but a quick burst from Sefi sorted that out. Her burst caught the slasher centre of mass, and this time it seemed to do a lot better, dropping the bad guy before he knew what hit them. Devil's Daughter quickly glanced towards Sefi, and gave a quick wink and a nod. Well, in Sefi's mind she did. It was a lot better than the reflexive assessment of the potential threat that was the reality. Chio, Sefi called down. Why are they shrugging off hits? I just took one's head off and it kept going. Their minds and personalities have been overridden by another consciousness, Gio warned. There's barely anything left of the original person. Gio stilled herself as more of the slashes emerged from the other end of the corridor of bookcases before charging. Gio quickly used her telekinetic power to throw books at the slashes to try and slow them, though she was loath to damage them. She wanted to read them later. She called upon her power, sending a bolt of telepathic force downrange, and completely ruptured the first slasher it hit obliterating them as the lance continued, 
knocking the next slasher down in much the same way. But two of them were able to dodge, and Chio didn't have the power to do that same attack twice in succession. She floated up and raised her side blade, trying to remember all the lessons Nika had taught her. How would Jack do this? He'd just go crazy. Wait, that gave Chiu a crazy idea. Quickly drawing as much of her power as she could, Chiu tipped the nearest bookcase over, which fell on top of the two slashes, scattering books and debris all over the place. Mentally wincing at all the dust and rubble covering the already flimsy looking tomes, Chiu quickly floated towards the down slashes, finishing them off with her side blade, though taking a very painful gash in her leg from where she couldn't move away in time. Stumbling back, she leaned against one of the bookcases, no longer bothering to float, since she needed to refresh as much of her power as she could, and her cut had dug deep. Nika growled as she swung her bow staff around in wide arcs, making sure to change the pattern of her swings in order to keep the enemy guessing. She had taken several hits already, but she had managed to hold her own, using the powerful strikes of her staff to keep the slashes at bay and break their bones with devastating counterattacks. The kinetic force strike module she implanted into her weapon intensifying the power of her impacts. Come on! She grinned. She was in her element as she spun and swept at an exposed leg, relishing in the sound of shattered bone, her momentum unhindered. Who wants some? Behind her bravado, she wanted to keep the heat off her friends. Jack could definitely hold his own. Alora and Dante apparently could too, but she knew that Sefi and Chio didn't have the advantage here in close range. So until the numbers of the slashes were thinned, she wanted to hold the line to cover the others while they did their thing. Besides, it wasn't like she was lacking in assholes to take down. She swung her staff in quick loops, keeping the slashes back while she considered who to strike next. A burst of plasma fire smacked into one of them, and Nika didn't hesitate to take advantage, tip of her star smashing the white mask and taking part of the slasher's face with it. Another slasher was picked up off their feet with telekinetic power, and with a wicked grin, Nika slammed her staff into their chest with a sickening crunch. Dante quickly dipped in and bit hard on the ankle of another slasher, filling them with deadly electricity, and Nika wasted no time in following through with a lethal swipe. And with that, Nika's opponents were down. Thanks for the assists, she called back with a cocky smile, but those were all my kills. The slashers are focusing on Jack and Devil's daughter. Both them and Alora need help. Devil's daughter's come for Jack, so let the slashers go for her, Nika replied grimly. Sefi, when we eliminate all other hostiles, I want you to have her in your crosshairs. I'm pushing up. You and Chio stay here and cover us. All right, Sefi replied unhappily. She was a fan of Devil's daughter's antics, but she would not let her harm Jack. Alora grunted in pain, as she vaguely felt another cut to rack her celestial form before she raised her hand and blasted the slasher with radiant fire until they dropped to the ground. Her celestial form wouldn't be able to take much more, but she was determined to stay in the fight for as long as it took, and deal with the residual pain after. Tertiary threat level increased! The prone slasher growled as they slowly expired, as Alora stabbed it in the throat to shut them up. She flew up into the air with her summoned wings, spotting another slasher charging towards where Jack was rampaging and dove down, pinning them to the ground with her shining spear, then yanking it back out to stab down again. Jack rushed past her yelling like a maniac, bleeding from many cuts all over his body as he chopped, shot and stomped any slasher that rushed in to desperately try to kill him. Alora quickly came to his aid, flying high and shooting more spells she had left at the few remaining slashers, as Nika rushed in to back Jack up as they headed towards Devil's Daughter and the Prophet, who were still singing spells to one another, trying to rip for the other's defences. While Devil's Daughter was powerful, she also had to fend off the attacks of the Slashers as well, and was clearly badly wounded for their attacks. The Prophet held on as she saw Jack approach, and gave him a mad smile. Accept his blessing, human, she growled, as she fought to maintain her shield. Become the hero of the Destroyer, and bring about the end! Overcharge! Jack's blast smashed into the Prophet's shield, and shattered her remaining protections. The last look she gave him, as Devil's Daughter's spell melted what remained of her natural body, was one of utterly confused shock and horror at being completely wrong. Devil's Daughter gave a visible deep breath as she began to turn around before she noticed Nika and Jack leveling their guns straight at her. I've moved position and got eyes on her, Sefi called in. 
Chio and Alora look badly hurt, and Dante is limping towards you. Shit, Jack muttered under his breath, before focusing his attention on Devil's daughter. The warlock said at him in silence, not moving as the others approached, stopping behind Jack. Except for Dante. The dog casually limped past them towards Devil's daughter with a wagging tail, heedless of Jack's quiet order to stay put, before standing in the middle of them, looking at both of them, and giving a single bark. Jack felt his rage calm on seeing the dog's behaviour, as Devil's daughter gazed down at Dante too, before visibly relaxing and looking back up to the group with a warm smile. Greetings, friends, she finally spoke, and be at peace, all of you. I am not your enemy.